A very good evening and thanks for joining us on News 360. We are coming to you live from our news hub here at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. My name is Aisha Yakubu. And I am Issa Moni. Coming up now, the headlines for tonight. Supreme Court Justice nominee Clemens Jackson Honyanuga apologizes for endorsing President Kufuado ahead of the 2020 general elections. Fresh amounts on the Electoral Commission to come up with appropriate roadmap for the conduct of the December polls. Also coming up, President Kufuado assures staff at the Noguchi Memorial Institute for medical research of government support to make operations more effective. And in business, mixed reaction from experts as the Monetary Committee of the Bank of Ghana needs to determine policy rates. On the international front, Lesotho's coalition government collapses, leaving Prime Minister Thomas Tabani without enough seats to continue governing. We'll have the details of these stories and many more, including sports and entertainment, coming up in the next one. I remember, we're also live on DSTV channel 279. Let's begin with our first story. And health authorities have been testing staff at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital for COVID-19. Head of the COVID-19 response team, speaking in an exclusive interview with TV3's Thomas Khan, said the move is to curb the spread of the virus and to make the hospital environment safe for health workers and patients. The Cape Coast Teaching Hospital is one of the health facilities in the country, providing health care for suspected and confirmed COVID-19 cases. To ensure staff of the facility are protected, management issued compulsory testing notice for COVID-19. Dr. Sally Fubawa is a senior medical officer and the head of the COVID-19 tax force team at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. When um, we suspect a case, what we do is to isolate them and then hold them here. So we call here the holding bay. So once we hold them here, we are able to conduct the test. And then when the results come, then we decide the mode of treatment. He revealed the hospital was following a careful guide in dealing with suspected and confirmed COVID-19 cases. So once we get the contacts, then we then contact these persons to also quarantine and then we take their samples for, for testing. So um, usually that is the process. And those that are quarantined, if you can quarantine at home, we look at the facilities at home to see if they are good enough for that. Otherwise, then we will have to bring you to the holding bay to keep you, if your home setting is not good enough, okay, and then we do that. He however called on the public for cooperation and to show love to persons affected. Meanwhile, the hospital has also directed the strict adherence to wearing of masks within the facility. The public relations officer of the hospital, Frederick Nyanka, also revealed management had provided face masks to all staff of the hospital. The news team also observed how staff and clients were screened and made to wash their hands before entering the hospital. All right now, close to 1,000 market women in the Bogotanga municipality have clashed with police during a protest against relocation. The women were rejecting a relocation plan by the Bogotanga Municipal Assembly as part of the Assembly's efforts to decongest the markets to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The police fired warning shots and tear gas to disperse the crowd. The market women, numbering over 1,000, stormed the premises of the Bogatanga Municipal Assembly over a relocation plan to decongest the market to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The police in the municipality moved in to control the crowd who were chanting war songs. Last month, the main markets were locked for four market days to allow social distancing protocols. The recent misunderstanding is as a result of a directive from the Municipal Assembly to relocate cereal dealers to the old market. The traders resisted fiercely. 
This is trying to destroy Bolga. The Bolga market is too small. It's not like the other market. It's not like Masi market, Accra market. So we don't understand. We want to hear from the DC. Abo da Allah kasu ane nda mute. Wala kanchi mute gani. Ane mu kaza unaruka ana gora muni. They are always sucking us from the market. They do not even give us a chance. Now they are blaming it on coronavirus. We don't like where they are relocating us to. That is the reason for this demonstration. We don't like the new market. Efforts to speak with the municipal police commander and the MCE were not successful. The commission has described as unfortunate comments by the minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, which sought to attack the integrity of the commission. According to the EC, claims that it has received personal protective equipment from the government are completely false. EC's response comes after Haruna Idrisu questioned the commitment and competence of the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Madam Jean Mensa. For the December polls, has been questioned. And on that basis, we have Sylvia Arno, who is the acting director of public affairs for the Electoral Commission, and uh, she will be speaking to us in a moment. Hello, Sylvia. Good evening, and thank you for your time. Good evening to you. Right. So, um, what is your immediate reaction to Haruna's allegations? Thank you very much, and um, a good evening to your listeners. Yeah, let me say that um, the Electoral Commission has issued um, a press release, you know, um, in view of the fact that um, a press conference was held last last week, somewhere like somewhere last week, by the minority leader. Honorable Haruna Idriso, and uh, the Electoral Commission has responded accordingly through the press release. Right, but listening to the uh, minority Haruna Idriso, he did say mm -hmm. that his comments were based on reportage on two media houses in Accra. So, have you checked with the media houses why they put out that reportage? We decided to. No, I. I are you, uh, are you saying that we should have checked from the media reportage from which he extracted the information to hold the press conference? Is that what you're trying to say? That is the claim he is making. We are saying that, you know, we, we thought that we should um, respond to the kind of allegations mm -hmm. he made during the press conference. So okay. let's speak to that. Okay, so has the EC procured... PPE. The Electoral Commission has not, uh, as we have stated in the press release, we have not um, we have not procured personal and put any personal and protective equipment. Do we you have, have not procured it? Yeah. We, we are in the process of procuring it, and let me say that we have not received any personal and protective equipment from government. That's what we should be talking about. Because mm. that's the allegation he made. Yeah, so, like you were saying, do you intend to procure some anytime soon? Of course. Um, once we will go ahead, we're going to go ahead with the registration exercise. It is only prudent that we uh, procure um, personal and protective equipment. So um, the general public will be protected. The applicants who turn out at the various registration centers will be uh, really protected. So that's exactly what we are doing, and um, it's still in the pipeline. But right. that was not the only uh, mm -hmm. issue okay. raised by the honorable uh, minority leader. There were other issues as well. All right. I, I think we will speak to those issues. Also. But is the EC planning to... Um, to organize the 2020 elections. So far, we have not heard that you have postponed the elections and we have not heard that it's been cancelled. Uh, no, the, the elections will come on as schedule, God willing. Um, we are not out of the mood yet uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. 
you know, that is staring us in the face. And we, 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 we are monitoring the situation. We are in talk with the Ghana Health Service. And as soon as the, like we indicated earlier when we left this week, you know, a few months ago, as soon as the pandemic is brought under control, we proceed with the registration exercise. So uh, observing all the, um, let me ask, that observe, we are going to observe all the safety protocols that are out by the Ghana National, Ghana um, Health Service and the Ministry of Health. All right. So, is there any particular guideline that you would want to make us aware of, which you think that the political parties who are your immediate stakeholders should be thinking about for now, since the elections definitely is going to come off? The main, the political parties are our main stakeholders. There's no way we're going to organize registration or a registration of, of uh, exercise without informing them. Uh, we'll definitely communicate all these um, information to the uh, political parties as well as the electric and all other stakeholders involved in the exercise. Right. Thank you so much, Madam Sylvia Anno, Acting Director, Public Affairs, Electoral Commission, Ghana. Stories. The 2020-2021 National Service Year will be completed despite the impact of COVID-19. Deputy Executive Director of the General uh, Services of the National Service Scheme, Dr. Gifti Owari Abwaji, said, though the scheme's annual sequence of activities have been adjusted, a cancellation is out uh, except advised by the board. George Queenan reports. The Secretariat says all activities are ongoing despite the COVID-19 pandemic. E-transactions have made operations easier with less human fees. Concerns were raised on a possible cancellation of the 2020-2021 program, but this, the Secretariat mentioned, can only be advised by the board. For us as an agency, we've issued our pins. We are still in shadow. Our board is supposed to meet. It will only be the board that can do that suggestion after they make a decision. If it can affect us, then we can move it to our minister, then move it to the higher authorities and see what can be done. Almost half of activities have been completed, with the others, including deployment of personnel, posting conference and monitoring and evaluation, hanging in the balance. Deputy Executive Director of General Services, Dr. Gifti Owari Abwaje said, personnel have been issued pins and that is enough justification to see the program running this year. We've done a lot of social distancing, we've done a lot of less human interaction. So when you want to register now, now you go to your user agency, get them to sign for you, then you book an appointment online. After you book the appointment online, that is when you can come to our various registration centers and register. And even with that, there is no way we are doing more than a 50 a day. She admitted MMDAs have requested for more personnel, advising prospective personnel to desist from the frequent changes made to postings. So far, we've had some private sector people show concerns and come up with some of the challenges they are getting, even in terms of what most private sectors in, sector people in Ghana do pay as you go. So it's frustrating for them when they do not have to do a lot of work, but then they have to pay people. Those people, we've had conversations as an agency with them. We are trying to see how best we can mitigate all their risk and help them to be able to solve it. Meanwhile, the Secretariat says challenges involving long queues, among others, have been addressed. This is the deployment and posting schedule of the National Service Secretariat. And now, let me run you through the sequence of activities. So request for class list, pin generation, campus orientation, deployment of pins, and as pre request by user agencies and online registration have been completed. But deployment of NSP letters and registration, NSP reporting at duty posts, NSS official working visit, and monitoring evaluation is something that we cannot really tell if it will still hold in the scheduled month. But should there be any you know, suggestions or let's say change in activities that behoves on the board of the Secretariat to make that very decision? And so from the NSS Secretariat here at Accra Airport, the screening reporting for TV3.
You're watching News 360 live here on TV3. Remember, we're also live on DSTV channel 279. We're also live on Facebook, on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. Let's do some more stories. And Supreme Court Justice nominee Clemens Jackson Honyanuga has apologized for endorsing President Kufuado ahead of the 2020 general elections. Justice Jackson Honyanuga in February, endorsed President Okufuado at a Debo of Chiefs in the Afajato district at his voting in Parliament on Monday. The nominee came under intense criticism for the comment. Here's a report by Komla Kluche. That the evidence I shall give before this committee. That the evidence I shall give before this committee. He swore an oath before the committee to be truthful and uphold the tenants for an attempt by the Tema East MP to delve into the endorsement by the paramount chief of the Nyagbo traditional area in the Fajato South constituency. The minority side of the committee pushed further on the controversy which surrounded his appointment with endorsement. Justice Huinyanuga said he was misreported by the media, stressing he had no qualms with the endorsement, which has caused public uproar. Whether you agree or not, uh, this is a, a very special occasion. He, the president, the President of the Republic has visited our district and you are asked to be the lead. And you read a statement on their behalf. So whether, whether you agree with it or not, there's nothing you can do about it. An attempt by the minority side of the appointment committee had the chairman of the committee ruled the question out, angry, the minority side who stepped out into conclave. Dawson, the president, how do you reconcile your conduct with the rules under please. the code of conduct for judges and magistrates? I'm refusing to admit the question because he has said that. He read a speech of the area he represented and, and for that reason it will be difficult to bring that to him as a personal opinion. We are dissatisfied with your ruling in refusing to admit this particular question of the Honorable Okuja to Ablakwa. Suffice it to add that he's only following up with reference made by the Honorable Titus Glover. And Chairman, this is judicial office, high office of Supreme Court. I think that the nominee is very, very capable and you should allow him to vindicate himself with an answer to this question. Then they had enough arsenal and fired back after returning. Did you consider what's called the principles of agent relationship? President comes. I mean, this, this, this is a, a more or less a, a convention. A president visits your area and you want to attract, you want to attract development. You want to attract, you, you want to also I mean, this is, it's, it's, it's done everywhere. As, as a matter of fact, I, in reading that statement, I did not intend that we were endorsing the president. The nominee had no option. Anybody or any group of people uh, think that whatever we said has uh, impacted or affected or uh, uh, their political, uh, I don't know, fortunes or anything, then I am sorry for that. Also appearing before the vetting committee was Justice Imoru Yusif Tanko. You're watching News 360 and uh, we're hoping to speak to Dr. Eric Odrosai. He is a local government analyst and we'll be looking forward to asking a lot of questions uh, about law of partisan or the law against partisanship in this era, especially under COVID and as we also face the 2020 elections. And um, uh, his lines appear not to be going through right now, but we will do everything possible to establish contact with him and then be able to put some questions to him. This is News 360 live from John Hammond Street. That is how we here in Accra. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
Thanks for staying with us here on News 360. And now, an Accra High Court has ordered the receiver of GN Savings and Loans Company to file a response by May 21 to the suit challenging the revocation of the license of GN Savings and Loans Company. The court gave the order after the receiver was unable to meet a 10-day deadline given. We'll go to that story a bit later and look at some more stories. The Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists has lamented government is not commit, committed or commitment at establishing the 135 gene expect sites across the country. According to its president, Ignacio Sawinibono, the gene expect sites would help expand the testing process in the country as the current testing centers are overstretched, resulting in delays of results. The Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists say they are happy that the ban on social gathering is still in place, arguing the current figures being given are not the real burden of COVID-19. Its president, Dr. Ignatius Awinibonu, said the health system is already overstretched, coupled with inadequate PPEs. The thing has been that we've cleared the backlog. As if it's a victory to clear backlog. First of all, the backlog should not have happened to the extent of embarking on pooling, which we are now saying the WHO uh, is coming to learn. He urged the country to stop priding itself as the only African country doing vigorous testing. The government or the Ghana Health Service and the Ministry of Health is afraid to embark on the mass testing within the populations. And if this should happen, Using other interventions, uh, I'm certain that the figures we are seeing will be far higher than that. The association proposed government expands the testing centers by providing the gene expert sites, the safety environment, and cartridges. You actually do not know who, which particular office is in charge of ensuring that this is put into use. For us to be able to use gene expert, by this time as a nation, we shall have put in an order and the contract should have been given. As we talk, I can talk authoritatively that no contract has been given to the suppliers to supply the cartridges. Now, some countries have started shipping their gene expert cartridges. So what is going to happen is that if we delay, they may give our consignment to others. They will come back mm -hmm. as a nation and we will we'll, we'll be uh, uh, lamenting. He also asked the FDA to speed up with the validation results on the rapid diagnostic test. The Ghana Medical Association also expressed satisfaction with the president's speech. General Secretary Dr. Titus Bayo wants testing for health workers, including those who work in high-risk areas, prioritized. Like health workers who work in dialysis unit, who work at the cardio unit, who work at the emergencies, who work on patients who are very vulnerable. And then for the general testing, results should come in quickly enough for us to be able to make sense of them in terms of interpretation. He advised Ghanaians to continue to practice the personal preventive etiquettes to help fight the virus. We should not sit down and assume that by the 31st of May, without doing anything, we'll be out of the woods and the ban will be lifted. So your hand washing, the proper use of the face mask all the time, not some of the time, pulling it down to talk, pulling it down to make a phone call, they are all not acceptable. Then social distancing. These are critical pillars to this fight. You're on News 360 and we have the business news coming up shortly. Do stay with us. A very good evening to you. Thanks for staying with us on News 360. Let's do business. My name is Nana Ikuya Mensah Brapa. Now, there's mixed reaction from experts as the Monetary Policy Committee meeting of the Bank of Ghana is ongoing to determine the policy rate, while some ask for a reduction to bring more relief to businesses. Others also expect the policy rate to be maintained due to the various interventions by governments for businesses. Well, the committee begins its meeting from Monday to review developments in the economy. 
Following the economic impact caused by the outbreak of the novel coronavirus in the country, the Bank of Ghana reduced the policy rate by 150 basis points to 14.5% last month as the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana starts its meeting today, Monday, May 11, 2020. Conversation has begun on whether the policy rate will be maintained, reduced or go up. For a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School, a reduction is necessary at the time of a pandemic. Well, if you ask me, I would say they should reduce it. Because um, reduction is a form of providing stimuli to the economy. Now, this time of COVID is about providing stimulus packages. One of the ways is to make sure that your structures in interest rate comes down. And by reducing monetary policy rate, you will have, you know, um, a gradual creep into interest rate. He explained reducing the policy rate will help bring interest rates down and reduce the cost of borrowing. This will send a signal to financial institutions to follow suit by reducing interest rates. Last time it was reduced to 14.5 and uh, for me that's one time reduction and that's not enough for the banks to respond. So if they reduce it consecutively twice it gives a kind of a trend and uh, I believe that with that the banks um, will respond. Economist Joe Jackson however thinks the policy rate should be maintained. I don't think that they will change the rate. The rate is um, will stay the same simply because we have to now look at the effect of the other policies they put in place before we rush to change the rate. Secondly, the rate is not really as uh, bringing as much change as we expected. The policy rate, which determines the rate at which the central bank lends to commercial banks, also has an effect on the cost of borrowing, as well as how much interest people pay on their loans. The Bank of Ghana has begun its 94th Monetary Policy Committee meeting to review developments in the economy. With the impact of the pandemic on businesses and individuals, expectations are high on the decision of the committee. Well, currently we have the policy rate at 14.5%. Let's see how that meeting will end on Friday to give you the latest from the Bank of Ghana. But away from that, the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Dr. Joseph Obeng, has suggested the ease and cost of accessing government's COVID-19 stimulus package should be the prime modalities. He noted the process for disbursing the stimulus package must not uh, be handled by one institution. COVID-19 is significantly impacting businesses and the economy. The National Board for Small-Scale Industries, MBSSI, has begun documentation for the disbursement of the 600 million city soft loan scheme from government, aimed at mitigating the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on micro, small and medium-scale businesses across Ghana. The rolling out a soft loan scheme of 600 million CDs in this month of May to support micro, small, and medium scale businesses. And as you know, the commercial banks, with the support of the Bank of Ghana, have also instituted a 3 billion CD credit and stimulus package to help revitalize industries. The MBSSI disclosed that over 200,000 small and medium scale enterprises will benefit from government 600 million CD stimulus package. But the national president of Guta, Dr. Joseph Obin, observed the figure falls short of enterprises that need help. It means that it's coming to 3,000 Ghana cities per head. And then it means that it is woefully inadequate. Because even Guta haven't submitted our list as yet. And so we don't know the basis for which they did that. That's why we are saying that this money should be directed to the targeted groups and then the trade shows work on. CEO of Dilex Finance, Kenneth Thompson, is of the view the MBSSI is tainted with politics and called for good standing institutions to disperse the stimulus package. I heard about MBA, NBSSI. Hi, yes. I have two problems with it. It suffers from the legacy of politics. It suffers from a legacy of uh, money going out and not being repaid because it was, it was done on a political basis. Why are we not working with the associations of um, lower banks, finance houses, extra, extra, extra. I have a problem with that. 
An economist at the University of Ghana Business School, Dr. Lord Mensa, said the call is legitimate. History has not favor us in terms of uh, distributions of such funds and that is why they are calling for their involvement and uh, I believe that if uh, we are to channel these funds through the financial system um, i.e. the microfinance, the banking the sector and all those rural banks and all those it should be able to um, find its way into the right hands and uh, right uh, part of the economy Dr. Joseph Obin stated there should be broader consultations. The modalities to assess, that's how it should be the ease, the ease of assessing the, the money and then the cost of assessing the money should be the day of government. And the fact that even government is looking at the bigger um, uh, stakeholders, entities like the manufacturers and all that, who are much, much bigger, does not um, limit any group from uh, assessing this fund. SMEs are to apply online for the 600 million cities stimulus package. Let's talk about the local commodities, talking about cocoa, and the survival of cocoa farms continues to be under threat following activities of illegal miners. Chief Executive Officer of Cocoa Board, Joseph Bwahin Edu, called on the security agencies to up the operations against Galamse in order to save the cocoa industry. On a tour to inspect the progress of the ongoing mass pruning exercise, the chief executive officer of Cocoa Board, Joseph Bwahin Edu, decried the destruction of cocoa farms by operators of Galamse. The cocoa, which is the backbone of the country, so more or less it's the economy of the country that is being destroyed. And these are clear saboteurs. Yet, we have recalcitrant uh, citizens who are, you know, uh, still bent on engaging in illegal mining. If the backbone of the economy is destroyed, then what is the fate of this country? It's sad. And um, I think the uh, security agencies will have to, uh, you know, step up their, their activity, their operations on these illegal miners. Because if you are not careful, they will destroy the entire uh, cocoa industry. The sustainability of the cocoa industry in Ghana continues to be challenged by the activities of illegal miners. These cocoa farms look like trenches dug by soldiers during war times. The impact of Galamse on cocoa farms is beyond description. Frightened at the approach of the cocoa board team on their base of operation, the miners quickly took to their heels in different directions, leaving behind their tools and machinery. Cocoa plays an important role in Ghana's growth and poverty reduction as some 800,000 farm families are employed in the sector. Everywhere we go, farmers are complaining that um, they are finding it very hectic dealing with these Galamsey operators. They come, farmers are not interested to give their land. The next time they go to their farms, the farms had been already invaded and then vandalized. You know, we cannot have a lawless society. It cannot be so. I'm using the opportunity to call on the security agency to step up their efforts in dealing with Galamse. The crop generates about $2 billion in foreign exchange annually and is a major contributor to government revenue and GDP for Ghana. Or well, you can log on to 3news.com for more business news updates. My name is Nanikia Mensah, but I return with sports with Julie Bina. Hello, good evening and welcome to the sports segment here on News 360 with me, Juliet Bewa. Now, Black Stars coach C.K. Akono um, is lacing his boots to settle into his role, which has been stampeded by the coronavirus pandemic. That notwithstanding, he is determined to make his mark. Delayed, but still a conversation around the table. Akono's appointment as Black Stars coach has attracted a fair amount of praise and naysaying. While the criticisms have ranged from caliber to being fit and proper, one that has often repeats itself is that of his temper. He flatly rebuffs that claim, saying he is not hot-tempered. You see, you know, I'm not somebody who will see red and try to make it tell you it looks like green. Once it's red, it's red. 
I'm not quick tempered. It's how I handle issues. You understand me? And and so it depends on how uh, they say. Sometimes they look at this and they, they tend to be like arrogant. You're arrogant. You're not. You know. And also, I'm a good listener. Once I'm doing something and you, you believe that you know it is not right and you call my attention, I'll listen to you. You understand? I don't want a situation where you come and impose something on me when we haven't discussed it. It won't, it won't go well. These people tend it to be like uh, it's a quick-tempered person or it's not. I am very, I wouldn't say honest, but I like to be honest, to say the way it is and, and then discuss it. So, but along the line, I have tried as much as I can to go around certain areas to slow down a bit on certain things, you know, and it's taking me a long way, but I'm doing it. While Akuno waits to know when he will be back on the touchlines, his undying resolve to build a formidable Black Star squad remains a top priority. Guiding that strong ambition is a philosophy to see things through, even if they incur the wrath of others. It's about us, over 30 something years that we've not won our AFCON. I don't want to be uh, any, any of the coaches that comes and, you know, it, it just goes and, oh yeah, it's the same story, you know. I want us to work and at least uh, do something and be relevant. A lot is expected of the former Wolfsburg captain who played for Ghana at various junior and senior levels. He also represented Ghana at the Africa Cup of Nations in 1994, the Olympic Games in 1996, as well as the Africa Cup of Nations in 1996, 1998 and 2000. Now, Ghana International and Fortuna um, Dusseldorf defender Kasim Nuhu is excited at the prospect of playing football again, but admits it will be odd without fans in attendance. Nuhu is one of at least five Ghanaians in the German top tier who may be back in action this weekend as the league returns in an audacious move after a long break due to the coronavirus pandemic. It's very exciting, but um, yeah, one painful thing is, you know, um, football is always with fans, you know. So, yeah, playing close doors is going to affect some of us because we have been always playing under our amazing fans, you know. So, I would say it's going to be very, very tough for us because, um, yeah, playing with our fans is very difficult. For example, we, um, Fortuna, uh, because we are we are last but three on the table, so it's, it's going to be very difficult for us because... We need our fans to cheer us up and everything so that we can get motivation from them so that we can we can deliver for them. But in playing on on I'll say it's like we are playing on neutral grounds, I'll say, because we have no fans and we have to play um empty stadium. As a player, in this kind of state going to play football, are you are you okay? Are you are you are you sound to go back to the field? Um it's very difficult for each and everyone because um yeah. Um but they, are, they have taken a lot of things into consideration. And I think, as we all know, even in the dressing room, we don't sit together. We, we sit in five in a very big room to dress up and everything. Um, so I think um, they have put things in, in, in place for us to, to be very, very safe so that we don't, we don't get the virus. On News 360 with me, Juliet Bewa. Good evening. Um, let's look at some more stories before we do entertainment news this evening. And President Kufuado has assured staff at the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research of government support to make their operations more effective. The president gave the assurance when he paid a visit to the facility on Sunday, May 10, 2020, to familiarize himself with operations at the center. The research facility located at the University of Ghana is the main testing center for COVID-19 in the country. Managers of Noguchi took the president round the facility and explained the processes samples go through before results are declared. Professor Abram Anan is a director of the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, University of Ghana. We call them next generation sequencing uh, equipment, next equipment. And they are only two in Ghana so far. When you are able to obtain a sample, let's say from an infected, a suspected person, no matter what the source, 
when you process it according to the sequencing you know, procedures and you put it in here, we have short, short amplicons, we have um, probes that we use to amplify certain regions of the genome of potential parasites. And those universal primates, when we use them, we are able to magnify any pathogen that is in the sample. And so it doesn't matter whether you are looking for COVID or for yellow fever or for dengue or anything. We are able to get everything that is in that sample. President Akufado assured managers of the facility of government support in their operations. Ghana, as at Sunday, 10th May, had conducted a total of 160,501 tests for coronavirus. Out of the number, 4,700 have tested positive for COVID-19, with 22 deaths and 494 recoveries. You're watching News 360. Up next is Entertainment News with Anita Ekofo. Time for some entertainment news. I'm Anita Ekofo. And in Entertainment Tonight, spotlighted as African winners are nominees of both the BET Awards and Grammy Awards respectively, Stoneboy and Kojinchi have been inducted into the Grammy Museum. The Sound of Africa exhibit showcases and celebrates the unique diversity of African music. According to Ava Hall Vice President, BET International Programming and Brand Advancement is part of recognizing and applauding the work of the best musical artists from the continent of Africa at the annual BET Awards, the organization collaborated with the Grammy Museum. The move was to take intercontinental music celebration to new heights with the Sounds of Africa exhibit and to create a fascinating tribute to legendary, traditional and contemporary African musicians. Circa 2016 created and launched the history-making exhibit in partnership with the iconic Grammy Museum to celebrate the musical and philanthropic contributions of African artists and the first ever exhibit at a museum dedicated to African artists. The exhibit featured handwritten lyrics and artifacts from Stoneboy, Kojoenchi, Two-Face, Edibia, Angelique Kijo, Davido, Hugh Masakela and... Still in entertainment, Takaradi-based rapper Kofi Kinata has revealed while delving into the ills of religion in the country in his hit song, Things Fall Apart, he also took a swipe at himself. Things Fall Apart, released in October 2019, ended the year as the biggest and most controversial song. It highlighted religion and questioned if people were really worshipping God. Apparently, Kofi Kinata also questioned his personal relationship with God in the song, which won a song of the year at the 2023 Music Awards. He disclosed in an interview with Ms. Ju on TV3 New Day that the line in the songs that attacks part-time Christians was directed at himself. I went through shot at myself. The whole part-time Christian thing was for me. Yeah, sometimes you feel you feel ashamed and the God will, will not let you even say you are a Christian. Like the, your kind of lifestyle doesn't suit a Christian. So we are part-time Christians and now also the Jehovah thing. You know, when the Jehovah Witness people uh, have been there before, I've done that before, and I, I'm not proud of that. And I'm done with that. When nowadays when they are coming. I listen to them. Interestingly, the rapper's father is a preacher of the Church of Christ. When he started rap, his father wasn't enthused about his choice of career because of the negative perceptions that came with it. For this woman, I think he's very proud of me because when I started doing the rap, rap, and when I started doing music, you know, the previous musicians, they had some perception for the previous musicians, so he didn't want me to do that. So there was a back and forth and argument and stuff like that. But... So my father, That's it for entertainment. I'm Anita Ikirikufu. Have a good evening. That's all from us this evening. Remember to wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Use your face mask if you have to go out. Thanks very much for joining us. My name is Aisha Yaku. And I'm Easter Morning. Enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs>